Brendan, congratulations. Thank you. Manager of the month. Um, what does this say about the, the body of work that you and the team have done here in, in recent weeks? Yeah, I think the, the, the players have been great and, and obviously got the results. And, and awards like that are always testament to, to everyone, you know, our, our staff, both here and at the stadium, and, and, and obviously clearly the players. So, um, so yeah, but we won't take too much heed to it. We, uh, we're coming into an exciting period now We these remaining games. So um, so our focus is very much on, on picking up team awards rather than individual awards. Uh, Dezan was back with the group this morning. Mm -hmm. He may have been earlier in the week, of course. Um, how is he ahead of the weekend? Is he back in your thoughts for, for Saturday? Yeah, he, he'll come into the squad for the weekend. So it's great news for us, thinking that he was maybe not going to be um, available was the initial uh, thinking medically, but uh, but he's recovered remarkably well, and I think we all see that he's he's a specimen physically. So uh, he's got back, and uh, it's obviously brilliant news for us. That's him back ahead of schedule. Callum came back way ahead of schedule. Is that sort of testimony to the desire, belief, professionalism of the group? Yeah, it's the it's the, the type of group that's always required here at. At Celtic, Celtic's culture is based very much on humility, hard work, and uh, and and being in an environment that allows you to grow and develop. And uh, both those players epitomise that. You know, very humble guys that get on with their work, and uh, have real professionalism in, 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 in their approach to their work. And that's that's what allows you to get back. It's Hearts this weekend. The last game against Hearts was eventful for a whole host of reasons. Mm. This week it's been confirmed that a couple of the decisions from that game were incorrect. As a manager to that, what is your reaction to that? Nothing. Nothing. My feeling at the time was that they weren't correct. So it, uh, it just confirms really where it was at a few months later. So it's gone. We... we, we we served our punishment and we didn't get the result and now we, we like we did way back then, we, we move on. Does it help to have the SFA come out after the event and, and pinpoint areas where there have been mistakes? Is that helpful in the, the overall process as, as VAR beds in better? Well, I think transparency is, is important for sure. So, um, and I think it's it shows courage from them as well to, to come out and and uh, and disclose that. So um, so I think that level of transparency and and reflection and will always help the game. I also think up here resources will help the game and um, helping the referees and supporting them with either the best technology or the best education that they possibly can be. Uh, that is what will also help. So, but uh, but I think for them to come out, uh, you have to uh, you have to say well done to them, but it doesn't change anything from from my perspective. Are you open for a, a less controversial game this time, then, Brendan? Certainly, a, a different outcome. Yeah, listen, I think the you know I, I won't get bogged down in in the last two games that we've had against them, uh, one at home and one away. But uh, for me, this is very much about ourselves and our focus. Uh, Hearts have done well. We played a really good game against them earlier on the season. For various reasons, two other games not so good, but this is us at home now in in the final stretch of the season, uh, super motivated and hungry to play well. And if we can do that and play well, then we we want to then be able to pick up three points. Do you feel that Hearts are facing a different Celtic that they faced in the previous two meetings? Yeah, I think just circumstances. I felt that we'd never turned up in the in, in the game we lost at home. Uh, we're nowhere near the tempo and level that we'd want to be at the back end of a Champions League uh, week, but uh, but still, we had enough of the ball. I think we'd, but we didn't give away so much other than the corner and the free kick that they scored from. Apart from that, we uh, we we gave away virtually nothing in the game. It was just that our attacking uh, play and tempo was was too slow, and and, and we didn't cause them enough problems. Um, I think the last game, again, we started well. Um, the sending off changes the the game, of course, but then the penalty changes the game. So, uh, but my players kept going, and and obviously, so circumstances within the game meant that the the result wasn't for us. But I would expect uh, us to to be on a more similar level to what we were earlier on the season. Obviously, you focus on yourself, but just in terms of Hearts 
obviously had two wins over you this season. Have you been impressed by them, especially given it's Stephen Nason's kind of first full year in, in proper management? Yeah, yeah, done very well. I, I expect Hearts to be up there, the, the size of the club and um, and what they've done in their history up up here in, in Scotland. So it's not a surprise for me that that they're up there, but also for Stephen coming in and his uh, first sort of job as a manager with that pressure of leading a, a club like Hearts. I think he's done very, very well. Three of the four matches are at home in this final we run in, Brendan. Just how big of a part do the Celtic fans play in the determination where this title's going? Well, well they play, play a huge part. I think I think that has been the, the difference probably over the, the last few months. How everything is, has been connected. Um, because... They, along we ourselves, the staff, everyone are a connection to the team, the real extension of of um, of what we see on the field and that support that they give the team. It's it's unrivaled when when everyone's on side and and they're with us. So so to have that in three of the last four games at home will be will be special. So um, but it also will need that patience as well because teams aren't going to turn up and, and roll over. So we have to we have to be patient in the stands as well as on the field but obviously looking to to play our game with that speed and tempo and and uh, causing difficult moments for, for the opposition but to play at home on the pitch with the crowd then of course that's uh, that. hopefully we can take that uh, advantage with us. You've mentioned a few times but this is where this point of the season is where the club comes alive. I just wonder for you personally how much do you relish you know these next four games these next five games and working with a squad and, and building what could be a very crucial and successful month to come yeah yeah but well, it's a very important month may is always important because that's when the trophies are given out if you're um if you're in this sort of fight and in this battle so so yeah i i really really enjoy it it's um it's a great part of the season and like i say but also you have to remain focused and, and concentrate. It's great for the supporters to dream and, and be there and it being so tight. But for us, what we have to really focus on our job on the field. And um, if we can do that, then we can finish off and have a really good season. You've played before Rangers this weekend, a chance to go six points clear. And your experience, either here or down south, in a title race, going first, <coughs> putting the points on the board and putting pressure on your opponents, can that be an advantage? Listen, I can sit here and lie and say no, but scoreboard pressure is always there. It's always there, but it doesn't count for nothing if you don't do the job. So I think that if you're playing second, of course, you, you'll know the other team's result. But, um, but primarily you have to focus on yourselves, but it can certainly add weight, especially at this time of the season, you know. You obviously got a, you seem to have a stronger squad than you've ever had since you came back, probably with the fitness wise. Do you, do you sense that some individuals as well are peaking at the right time as, as well? Is that going to help you in the next few weeks? Yeah, my, my, my focus is firstly is the team. I need the team to to peak. Uh, of course, individual players have, have gained fitness, which is important. I think this is the first time where we've had this sort of clean bill of health, really. Everyone available that's that's a professional in the squad being being out training which is which is absolutely brilliant so um but ultimately it's about the team you know the the individual players of course some of them got up to speed got up to fitness which is brilliant but it's how we function as a team that will determine where we finish yeah, Liam Scales got a new contract this week are you pleased that done and is that saying his progression this season yeah delighted Michael he's um he's been a real stalwart for us this season, he's played a lot of games, played a lot of minutes, and uh, I think him alongside Matt O'Reilly have played the most football for us uh, on the field. So, so for him, when when lots of the players were breaking down uh, earlier on the season or injury, he was the one guy that was there for us the whole time. So I'm absolutely delighted for him because um, last summer it was probably in doubt where he was going to be, where he was going to play. But um, hopefully, can end this season a winner, an international football player, and having signed a new deal, it's it's a great reward for his uh, for his work over the course of the season. 
think um, I think Greg Taylor's got his last year, his contract. He's someone. Is it a, a no-brainer in terms of looking to get him tied down as well? Yeah, yeah. I'd love to keep Greg here. It's something that we've spoken on. It's it's obviously up with the club and the you know with with the agent to uh, to try and resolve. But uh, but in the meantime, Greg's focus is very much um, on the team. As I said, he's I really really like him as a as a person. He's a good guy. He's he's very hungry. He's very committed. He's very professional. He sacrifices a lot in his life to be a footballer, and he's very committed. And that's the type of people that you want here. So. Um, so yeah, hopefully uh, there can be something resolved on him. But the Cal manages an hour last week at Dens Park. Is it just careful management at this stage of the season? You think? Yeah, I think it's just a case of trying to get him to his near level as as he can be at. Um, clearly, we've been managing him, and uh, but I've seen a difference in him this week. I have to be honest. I think he he'd been doing a lot of work over the last couple of weeks on his strength of his Achilles which actually probably left him a little bit leggy I would say in, in the games but uh, but we've cut a lot of that out this week and because um, he's obviously had to strengthen the Achilles with the issues that he's had but he's now looked a lot lighter on his feet, a lot fresher and um, he's not quite there to, to where he was earlier in the season but he certainly uh, looks in a much better place so, uh, so yeah it's just been that management of him you were talking about the connection with everybody right now. Is there been an actual catalyst for that? Is it the players coming back fit, fit, things clicking? Is it just football, how things happen at a certain stage of the season? Can you put your finger on it with, for any reason? Yeah, I think everyone's now focused on football. You know, I think the um, there has been a lot, felt a lot of distractions at the in the first six months of, of the season for in, in various ways but I think once the focus has come into football and everyone really being together with that then that makes a huge difference and the players feel that and uh, so that as I said the, the, the extension to the team the staff supporters everything this is such a incredible fan base here and when they get behind the team as what we've seen the last few months, then you see the strength and that unity of everyone moving forward. So, so that is for me, looking at it from a managerial perspective, been the real catalyst, and uh, and hopefully we can continue that way. Is the unity as strong as you felt it since you came back just now? Yeah, yeah. I think there was a lot of settling in, probably a lot of adjustment with me coming back and how long is it going to be here and. Obviously, Ange leaving as well. You know, the the Ange and, and you know a couple of successful seasons. So you lose one manager, another manager comes in that maybe some people don't want in, and so there's all that settling going on. And then, obviously, the the, the principal difference in, in performance has been the, uh, the the unavailability of players. That's that that has been the you know the the main. Difference in terms of at times when the maybe the the team hasn't played at the tempo and or style or whatever way you want to call it, because we've missed players that that have a a dynamism and and, and give a directness to to this team. So um, so I think all of that all thrown into the pot made it a little bit I felt um, fragmented. But as time has gone on and everything's settled and. The team has picked up important results and, and some really good performances and now we're getting to this stage where we've now all come together then, yeah, I would say this feels uh, the most settled of everything since I've been here. You were here last year when you first came in, you spoke about um, Stuart Armstrong perhaps not being integral to your vision itself to be forced as we the team by adopting your message and what you were trying to implement here. Liam Scales feels like that player of the new age that he's perhaps not in the immediate plans, he's listened to what you're trying to bring to Celtic and here we are, going towards the end of the season, he's got a new deal and he's got four years to look forward to. Yeah, I think it's, it's, that's ultimately, I think it's where my strengths lie is in terms of trying to make people better and, and, and improve them as, as players. And to see him and, and the confidence that he's played with uh, over the course of this season in some big games for us and performed absolutely fantastic. So. Uh, so yeah, in my first time back, there was a number of those players that maybe quite weren't in the starting eleven, 
but we work with them and talk with them and give them confidence and, and then they have to perform. Stu's an example was a brilliant player for, for me here, his dynamism, everything was, was amazing. So um so yeah, so Liam is is maybe one of those of this version uh back. But uh, but really, really pleased for him because he loves being here. He's uh he's he's dug us out of a hole for a lot of the season when we've had lots of inconsistencies in that position. And um, I'm delighted for him that he, he feels rewarded for that. In terms of dealing with the pressures of this point of the season, has your man management approach changed over time, either, either a personal maturity in terms of being further into your career or a collective basis in terms of it's been the first time you're dealing with this group of players pushing towards this high pressure spell of the season? Yeah, no, I've really enjoyed it. I've, as I said, it's the game we all know is about pressure and it's just it's all at different levels and how you deal with that and how you you take that and and for me i'm 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 comfortable in this this environment and this this pressure situation so um now for me my my job is to decrease the pressure on the players you know it's something that I've always done, especially at the the biggest clubs because there's so much pressure on these guys from a variety of of places so i don't want to add to that my job is to regulate that pressure for them to let them feel confident in how they play and to uh, and to manage the their mood and making sure that it's always positive and ready to go and and play and play as best they possibly can